Hello everyone, I'm Mini FC and this is Blue Line CV and today I'm bringing you the match review of our 3-2 win over Southampton. I think a lot of us felt that that wasn't going to be happening in a million years but that's the beauty of football and that's why we support our club but you guys, you know what the deal is, I know that I've become like a bit of a meme now on Twitter but <laughs> smash that bell notification button, like smash it to stay tuned to all things Blue Lions TV. And you guys helped me get more than 500 likes for this video. And thank you to everyone that watched my live stream watch along just a few minutes ago for the Southampton game. But you guys getting straight into the match review, starting with the pre-match lineup. And there were some surprises, obviously, really good not playing in this game. And uh, in a way, a lot of us aren't surprised by that. I think we all knew the comments that he made in regards to the last game about, you know, playing the way we do, why we play without the ball anytime we win games. That's probably one of the main reasons as to why Conte didn't pick him for this game. And uh, it's not the first time really has done something like that. Uh, against Man City, the second game that we lost to them, he came up with comments critiquing our approach to the game. And it's the second time he's done that. And me, maybe I'm just speculating too much, but I'm kind of thinking maybe Conte gave him a warning. Really could have done it again. And Conte's like, well, you're not in the team for today. But there was some other surprise selections as well. Zappa Costa starting in this game. And there really wasn't any rotation. Uh, we didn't see Emerson playing. I think a lot of us felt that Emerson would be playing in this game, especially when Alonso hasn't been too great recently. But that was a pretty much line up. Getting straight into the game. And honestly, it really wasn't a very good performance until that moment Giroud uh, got the goal for us. There was this, like, this lack of I, imagination and ideas when it came to our build-up play. And you guys know I constantly critique, uh, critique why we have to keep forcing the play with these direct balls instead of just keeping possession in our opponent's half. Playing the ball, keeping it, waiting for the openings between the, you know, the opposition's midfield and their defence. And then try to stretch your play and then get those wing-backs to make those late runs and really dominate the game. Uh, I don't understand why we don't do that approach it works more towards our favour. I mean, most times when we do score goals, we score goals from those types of situations. We don't really score too many goals from the counter-attack. So, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a bit surprising. But, again, this lack of imagination. And it was like the desire of some of these players. And I don't like really making those type of comments. I, I feel that it's a bit too passion merchant-y, if you guys know what I mean. But I'm seeing players not really putting too much effort in for 50-50s. I mean, credit to Southampton especially. There was a lot of desire. Of course, it's an important game for them in their hopes of staying up in the Premier League. So maybe they were playing beyond their limits, you know, playing with 110%. And maybe that's why I'm conflating the two. But it wasn't a great performance. We weren't really creating much chances at all. Players were losing the ball. A lot of the players were getting broken down. A lot of players were isolated as well. And Southampton were the team that were looking pretty comfortable. And then Southampton get the first goal. Ryan Bertrand, he bombs down, beats Aspilicueta, gets inside the box and plays across, uh, you know, across the goal. Now, at that time, when I saw the goal, I was blaming Aspi. But then I analysed things properly. I saw some more camera angles. I... You know, the fantastic thing about watching it on TV is is that they replay these moments so many times. And then I notice it's the main culprit, and it's always this main culprit, Zappa Costa. Now, for me, I think it's kind of scandalous in a way because this guy isn't even a first team player. You'd really think one of the rare opportunities he's playing, he's really trying to put in extra effort to let Conti know, you know what, you need to pick me. Of course, we're going to play Southampton again in the cup. This could have been a big shout for him to be playing over Victor Moses, but I make this point all the time. He's nowhere near as good as, uh, nowhere near as good as Victor Moses. And for that goal, how many times do you guys hear me complain about his lack of tracking back and never getting back into defensive positions quickly on time? And this really messes up Aspila Kretz because this guy's then put in a no man's land situation where, well, of course, he needs to push out a bit because there's no one in the area that should be there. Zappa Costa. And then he's like, but I need to stay in line with my back three as well. So it was no surprise where there was a little bit of hesitancy from Aspi. Brian Bertrand obviously took advantage of that, bomb past him. And it was just like, if Zappa had done his job, if he had... Because you're seeing Ryan Bertrand making that run. If he had 
run back because he's a fast guy run back in position quickly that's not going to force Aspilicueta to have to come out from his defensive line and then we prevent that opportunity for Southampton to get the first goal then and you guys this is my main reason as to why I just don't rate Zappa Costa and I get really baffled as to why people value him over Victor Moses what did he do in this game today absolutely nothing but I think from that goal going in you could see maybe heads were starting to fall a bit more the play was getting worse there was really some non-existent chance creation. I felt sorry for Morata. Didn't get any decent service whatsoever. Just balls getting blasted at him. You saw two guys on his back all the time. Not really much for him to do. We can't even get Hazard or Million into the game as well. And then, again, you guys. Another thing that Southampton had the advantage of us in this game was the fact that, you know, you guys know. I say this all the time. We can't defend from set pieces. We just can't. Of course, it's a combination of having, you know, smaller players who aren't as good airily. But it's also the positioning and the laziness. But I'm going to get into that later on. Of course, uh, first half ends, goal down. Second half begins. I'm not really seeing too much of an injection at all. It looks like it's the same old thing. We can see the second goal. And I'm critical of this guy, Marcus Alonso, because when I watch that goal go in, I 1000% blame him because that was his man. You should have stayed tight with him. There was no excuse not to. You see this guy jog back into position afterwards. No one blamed Kale for this. He was marking someone else. Alonso didn't do his job. And then Southampton capitalised from that. And it was like a matter of time before Southampton were going to score from a set piece. And I'm surprised that's something that we can't, we haven't really improved on since last season when it comes to defending set pieces. We tend to concede similar types of goals, you know, uh, uh, you know, long shots and uh, and, and, and set pieces and, and, and headers from open play. They're like the three main goals we do concede, uh, especially this season. I thought it was criminal and, uh, you know, of course, during the watch long, I was very frustrated because Alonso didn't provide any type of attacking support in this game. Basic things he should have been doing, like making the overlapping runs to free a man for Hazard to exploit the spaces in. He wasn't even doing that. And honestly... This is where the game just, everything turns on its head. You, you're seeing things that you weren't expecting. And literally all of this comes from a goal. And, you know, it comes from unusual players. Now, of course, Conte makes a substitution, makes a double sub, takes off Zappa, uh, you know, brings on, uh, and takes off Morata, brings on Giroud, and brings on Pedro. And I think most of us are thinking about what's really going to happen here. Nothing's going to happen. Me, myself, was thinking the exact same thing. We've seen this same substitution mode quite a lot of times. When's it ever changed the course of a game? When's it ever helped us overcome something? You know, we're two goals down, you know? And then literally, Alonso finally, after how long, puts in an amazing cross from deep to, it's not even near the byline, an amazing cross, swing, curve, everything. One of those undefendable type of crosses. And Giroud, Olivia Giroud, another guy gets his first goal in the Premier League. This is his first time he scored for us in a Chelsea shirt in the league. Amazing header into the bottom corner. And this is a Giroud guy that's been missing way easier chances throughout the season. Unbelievable goal. I mean, amazing cross and a world-class header by Giroud. And once that goal goes in, there's this injection of belief. The football starts to come back. And most importantly, Southampton start to panic. They retreat into their own half. They're not really pressing anymore. you got to realise too, most of their midfield players were on yellow cards as well. So a lot of these guys were playing on very fine lines to begin with. So this is all playing a part. And with that goal, and with South Southampton just sitting back in their own half, not really coming out, that really helps us, you know, helps give us the agency and urgency in this game to really take it to Southampton and the pressure was coming and we were finally just keeping possession keeping the ball not forcing things and we were keeping it and playing across uh, their defensive lines and as we were stretching the play moving in it from the left to the right to the left to the right you could see more Southampton players not really being in position the panic's kicking in and then the second goal comes and Amazing finish by Aiden Hazard. Great finish right for the top uh, left corner. It's 2 all, and you're thinking, wow, we can get back in the game. We can we can win this game. 
everything is going towards our favour. And this is so crazy because everything's like come against the run of play. We haven't shown any signs of this type of agency throughout the game before that Giroud's first goal. And of course, the main guy, the man of the match today, of course, is Olivia Giroud, comes on, seals the deal from a set piece, which is the ironic thing. We're the one that capitalised from a set piece. And Giroud's great first time finish. And it's just like so many times this season, he's been in areas like that where that shot hasn't been going into the back of the net. And of course, the uh, on TV, they make the fantastic point that in a way, uh, you know, Southampton are Olivia Giroud's, uh, you know, that, that's the team he loves to play against. I think before we signed for Arsenal, I think he already scored the winner against them. And like, this this type of thing works in football. You know, you get that belief where it's like, I've done this against this opposition before. I know what type of advantageous areas I can exploit them in. I know how to, you know, I, I feel confident playing against these guys. And you can see that confidence, you know, Giroud attempting that run. First time amazing header. First time shot. It, it's just instinctual when you have that confidence and belief behind you. And then we've completely turned the game around at 3-2. Completely turned it around. Came against the run of play. Can, can, yeah, Southampton just, yeah, they felt they just couldn't hack it. The pressure, I think, that got to them, of course, are right in the bottom of the table. We capitalised on that and Giroud finally in a Chelsea shirt. Uh, done his best piece of, of work for us since we signed him. I've been making this point. I have been critical of Giroud a lot because I feel that he doesn't really provide much. He's missed too many chances as well. This game, he proved his worth today. Let's hope now that, you know, with the games going on, we're playing Southampton again. This confidence and belief is going to kick on. Because really, that's what helps us win the game today. You know, it was the first goal giving that belief back in the team and Southampton retreating and getting nervous and then we capitalised on that of course as the game was ending some nervy moments of course some set piece scares of because we can't defend from set pieces of course uh, you know as one Southampton player gets through on goal because of course we're going to concede that type of chance of course Conte took off Hazard for no reason at all but then uh, of course Moses coming on it stopped all the delivery from the left-hand side once he came on. And this is why this guy should start every single game. And yeah, you guys, we win this game 3-2. And this is really going to give us the advantage when we play Southampton in the next game. But you guys, I'm going to be getting into a lot of these talking points from the game in tomorrow's video. I'm going to be breaking down all the positives and negatives from this game. So expect to watch that five talking points from the Southampton game tomorrow. You guys, thank you for watching. Thanks for everyone that watched the watch along. Thank you for watching the match review. Smash that bell notification button. You guys know what to do already. Smash the like button. 500 likes. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Thank you, Olivia Giroud. Thank you, Olivia Giroud. The beards came through today. The beards came through today. I'll see you guys later.